So we're here again with John Perlin, who's the author of Let It Shine, the 6,000-year story of solar energy. That's right. Here we are. <laughs> right. So why don't we take, um, let's just take it from the top and talk about the premise of the book. What, what were you trying to get accomplished in this? Well, um, actually, um, I learn as I write. Um, what I was trying to show, uh, if I was correct, that um, the notion that when I tell everybody I'm writing a history of solar energy book, it's not going to be thin. Mm -hmm. Because most people assume that solar energy is a, a, a 1970s um, artifact. Mm -hmm. What's well, really funny, uh, I was at InterSolar uh, last year. Uh, the leading people in um, green tech media who are supposed to know everything about solar, uh, they, they, they couldn't believe that solar went uh, before um, the 1970s. I see. Well, I would think, personally, um, I would think that most people associated with um, photovoltaics, which obviously is, is, is you know, what, almost 100 years before the 1970s, but I think most people think that precious little was done on it until, you know, until the oil embargo in 73 or, you know, uh, Jimmy Carter put solar panels on the White House roof or what have you. Well, actually, first of all, uh, the development of photovoltaics had little to do with politics. Uh, it had to do with uh, serendipity. The first uh, wave was uh, the discovery that a solid state material could convert sunlight into electricity was a almost heretical idea because it occurred in the 1870s when people believed that the only way you moved a, a machine or powered a machine was through heat. <laughs> And suddenly, uh, they sh showed that it wasn't heat or the heat of the sun that was causing this electricity, but it was the light of the sun. Mm -hmm. So they were totally um, confused yes, I because can. there was no scientific um, guidelines. Mm -hmm. uh, so a few people dared to think that this actually could be possible for one thing, mm -hmm. actually the, a paper uh, that uh, showed the um, success of shining light on selenium and getting an electrical current was almost not published because of that. I see. It was only the intercession of the greatest scientists of the day, um, James uh, Clark yeah. Maxwell, or James Maxwell Clark, however he's yeah, named. Clark Maxwell. You know? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> He um, interceded, well, but he didn't know what was going on. No, of course not, because this is before anybody imputed the, a particle nature to light, and so until you figured that out, you, there, you were kind of a prayer. You didn't have a prayer of getting this done. Well, not only that, but um, not only did no one know about subatomic um, materials, most people didn't think the uh, atom was real. I see. So you have two uh, necessary uh, pieces of knowledge uh, that can explain the photovoltaic effect, and it had to wait till the end of the 19th century when they discovered the electron. Right. And two, they discovered that um, light didn't always act as a wave. Right, exactly. Which was a really a shocker, mm -hmm. because they thought they had integrated, unified science into four equations. And then as they were experimenting uh, with those equations, they, in one experiment, they discovered that uh, light did not act like a wave. Amazing. Now, this was also the days of Boltzmann, the, the great uh, thermodynamics guy, right? He, must have, he was one of the kings of the late 19th century. Right. And what always happens in a kingdom is there's also an ascendancy of the young princes. Mm -hmm. And one of the young princes was uh, Albert Einstein. And um, Albert Einstein explained the anomaly with two beautiful equations showing that light is not always a wave, that it's also a particle that contains its own energy varying uh, inversely by the length of the wave. Right, exactly. Very good. 
So that gave photovoltaics the infrastructure. Then it had to wait uh, for the semiconductor revolution. Right, mid-20th century, I guess. Okay.